every firing stroke, of which there's 92 per cylinder per second, is a force of about seven tons on the piston. So the whole of the forces involved in an engine are colossal. Fuel for the Cosworth is injected into the combustion chambers down an arrangement of eight small tubes. These are connected to large intake throats which suck air into the engine. Air and fuel get in and exhaust gas gets out through valves operated by the camshafts. Camshafts turn rotational into reciprocating or up and down movement. This opens the valve against a spring which closes it again. At high revs, these springs start bouncing. Engine power can be lost, or even worse. Bob Gaylor is a high-speed engine designer. If I stretch this out, if you imagine this as being an exaggerated example of an engine valve spring, then as it's working, that's what it would look like if it were being filmed by a high-speed camera. As things start to go wrong, if the valve spring itself is hit too hard by the camshaft, or if discontinuity in the valve train occurs, then this starts to happen. A shock wave starts from either end of the spring, meets either in the middle or somewhere between the two ends, and at the point at which those two shock waves hit, that's where the stresses are set up, and that's the result. So a spring breaks. But what follows takes a split second. This sort of valve spring failure is usually the first event in a disastrous train of events. Here we have an example. This was originally an inlet valve that looked like this. Because the valve spring broke, the valve was no longer in contact with the valve train, and as the piston came up, the valve was still hanging out of the valve seat the piston hit the valve, bent the head of the valve over, and then the next time the piston came up, it punched its way through the piston crown like this. The head of the valve broke off, went down through the piston, bent the connecting rod, the piston came back up and punched its way right out of the side of the block, destroying the whole engine. The whole process took less than a second. Of course, this kind of energy being dissipated in that short space of time is the equivalent of a small bomb going off just behind the driver's head and can be very frightening. One way of overcoming these problems is to throw away the springs and do the job mechanically using a second cam to close the valve. It's called desmodromic valve gear. This one is from a racing motorcycle, but could it be applied to the Cosworth in the search for power to repel the turbos? There is no doubt that if you sort out your desmodromic valve gear, you could raise your uh, rev limit, but uh, I think even more important, it should be able to improve your breathing at the top end of the speed that we're already running to give more power at, say, 10,500 than we have at the moment and our efficiency will also improve if we in fact can get more power without raising the rev limit. But what has springless valve gear got to do with skirts? The answer lies in another of the Cosworth's features. Like all good athletes it has a very narrow waistline. Where the two banks of cylinders come together the V forms a truncated Y. This is the crankcase and with careful engineering, it has been kept slim to aid the ground effect racing car. The ground effect wing will only work if there is space between the rear wheels and the engine block, allowing the air from under the car to diffuse into the wake. The rear of a Ferrari is filled with engine because it is a flat 12, six cylinders on either side, which are impossible to move out of this airstream. The latest Ferrari has adopted a turbo engine similar to the powerful Renault. But even though these turbos are narrow, the engine has to have much more plumbing around it to cool the hot, compressed intake air. But banning the skirt 
has made the ground effect wing ineffective and no ground effect puts a less powerful Cosworth at a disadvantage. So just like the German cars of the 30s, the factory turbo teams could now dominate racing for years. It is very difficult for uh, full scale major manufacturer participation in motor racing. It is not very easy for a major manufacturer to stand the publicity of permanently losing. The chances of getting a grid competitive again, should we change to turbo, is negligible. It has stopped raining, but the engine is making peculiar noises due to the unsprung tires skipping on bumps. I've been known to be wrong. A worried pit crew called Jones in for a check. The gearbox casing has been battered as the low flexing car constantly hit the tarmac. Yeah, have a look at the front. The punishing, bumpy ride of the unsprung car is not popular with Jones. So Frank Williams adopts his best bedside manner. Which end is affected more, the front or the rear of the car? Can you tell? Huh? You don't think there's any potential in? Well, if you could, if you could put suspension on the seat, I mean, that's, 